Kaplan Clark and the Indiana Fever. Their season on the line. The Sun looking to close out this best of three. Cheney Fever trying to stay alive right in the first quarter. Caitlin Clark and Dewana Bonner get into it. What do we see here? They've been tippy all uh, game long, but what we saw there was just two athletes competing. That's a tough matchup, but they kept their heads focused and the game was good following this. And, and to the fourth quarter, it was really good. The Sun have a six point lead and what a night for Alyssa Thomas. My goodness, a lot of times you see her points, you're like, oh, how much does she do? She does everything. One of the most strong players in the WNBA. She is a queen. She's a bully in the best way. She had 19 and 13, and it looked like the fever <laughs> were going to fall apart, but it was Caitlin Clark who kept them in that it. That was a tough shot. Time after time, you see the blitz. Caitlin Clark is the most blitz player in the WNBA, and she's still able to pull off plays like that. She got them the lead, so now we're under two minutes left. Sun down by two, and it's Bonner with a big, big shot. Should we say big shot Bonner? Whether it's Mabry or Bonner, they hit timely threes, and unfortunately, Kelsey Mitchell, a couple of hers were short. Those could have been separators for Indiana. And, and, and you speak of Mabry. She had 17 points. Yeah, she's huge. I mean, she was an acquisition midway through the season, and I call her the answer. Anytime someone hits a three, she has the answer right back at them. Look at the emotion. Final seconds. Fever down by six. Desperation time. That would be Caitlin Clark's last shot of the season. She would score 25, nine assists, but the Sun win. They eliminate the Fever. And after Caitlin Clark on the year that was. I feel like basketball has really consumed my life for a year. So I feel like it'll be good for me to kind of reflect back on everything that's happened. Like, I feel like I didn't even have time to really reflect on my college career because it ended so fast. And then I came here and was trying to give everything I could to, to this team. And it was special. It was, there was a lot of things that this group accomplished that, you know, a lot of people probably th didn't think was possible. Candidly, it feels like a whirlwind to me. I can only imagine what it must feel like for her. A year ago, she's getting ready to start her final year at Iowa. How do we contextualize what this year has been for her and candidly for women's basketball as we know it. Look, she came into the WNBA with great expectations. We witnessed her become the most impactful player that we've seen in a generation. And it's a combination of both on and off the court. Off the court, attendance, viewership, on the court, her prolific scoring and also assists. Guess what? At the end of her rookie campaign, we can say the same damn thing, y'all, about what she has accomplished. It's amazing. She averaged 19 and 8 as a rookie. I averaged 12, I think, as a rookie of the year. That is not an easy feat in the WNBA. Post All-Star break, she averaged 23, 9, and 5. That break was great for her. More importantly, she continued to make, make history. Single season assist record, that's hers. Only rookie to have a triple-double, she has two. It's wild, but most importantly, this is the number that blows my mind. I believe by the end of the year, she generated the most points in the WNBA, which is wild. Last uh, night, I think she accounted for 45 points. What she has done, um, being cool, calm, collected, even though she wears her emotions on her sleeve, has just captivated not only just women's basketball, but the world of women's sports. She delivered, and she deserves some rest. I hope she get, you know, coming off of the last season, Iowa season, going into the WNBA, it's not easy, but she held it with grace. Look, I mean, for all the talk about her not being on the Olympic team, I, from a basketball perspective, it was the best thing that happened to her. She played so much better after she got a little bit of rest, and now she got the summer or the winter off. Uh, we'll talk much more about this as we go. We have a lot more two games last night. WNBA playoffs continue. We will continue with Cheney in a moment. The carpet ride of a rookie season comes to an end last night. We couldn't have possibly imagined the heights she would climb to. Back in May, she and the Fever got off to an awful start. Team was 1-8. and eight. Caitlin Clark was shooting under 38% from the floor. But the season really turned around and picked up after the Olympic break. Chennai talked about that a little bit at the beginning of the show. Clark was left off the team. That was controversial. But that month to rest may really have been the best thing for her. When she came back, she averaged 23 points a game, which was third in the league. We've never seen a rookie take the WNBA storm, uh, like the by storm, excuse me, like Clark has. She set rookie records for total points, assists, three-pointers, and minutes played, all while becoming the first rookie ever to average 15, 5, and 5. So, Cheney, I've known you a long time, and, and I can see the pride that you, as someone who cares so much about this league, takes not just in the season that Caitlin Clark had, but in the season that Angel Reese had. And other rookies who came in this year, Cameron Brink, who got injured, yeah. the, the transformation that they brought to this league is something that we may look back on someday and say, this was the year everything changed forever. Absolutely. You know, last year, based off of the Aces becoming back-to-back -back champions, there was real momentum. 
I said last year was the year of the super teams, right? Las Vegas Aces, New York Liberty. This is the year of the super rookies. And my goodness, they delivered. And if we think about history, it really repeats itself. Because if you go to the NBA, it took about 30 years until the guys by the name of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson stormed onto the scene. They were stars in college that mm -hmm. represented different aspects of society that took the NBA off of tape delay and elevated it to the modern day NBA that we know right now. These two women that you see on your screen did exactly that in a similar fashion. The WNBA is 28 years old, or should I say young? Mm -hmm. And if you see the history, first of all, it was that rivalry in college. If you watch their matchup, the sky and the fever, it was there and they had big moments. What they were able to do in completely different ways, again, our country is captivated by achievement, by sports. That's why we all come together and watch these games and seeing all those great storylines come to fruition from college now to the pros. But at times, based off of what they represent, you can see the crevices of society. Nonetheless, these women with all of that pressure, they delivered. Angel Reese, what, 15 consecutive double-doubles, set the WNBA single season rebounding mark until Asia Wilson <laughs> took that over uh, the, one of the last, yeah. season, last games of the season. I mean, we can't say enough about Caitlin Clark and her scoring and also assists. Those things, those accomplishments, rebounds, assists, points generated, those are not easy feats, and they did that in year one when all the eyeballs were on them. Yes, this was the year, 2024, where the game changed not just for women's basketball, but I believe for women's sports because the WNBA has an ability to opt out of their CBA soon. We'll see with this momentum and the leverage they have if they can sort of put everything on the map. Listen, we are a star-driven culture, mm -hmm. and there is nothing more valuable you can have in a sports league or anything else than legitimate stars. Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, and a few of the others have become legitimate stars in our culture. That's the best news a league could possibly. Caitlin Clark envisions a bright future for Indiana. Although the Indiana Fever faced a swift exit from the 2024 WNBA playoffs after a two-game series loss to the Connecticut Sun, Clark remains hopeful and energized about what lies ahead for the franchise. Reflecting on her rookie season and the progress the Fever made, Clark emphasized the positives despite the playoff disappointment. This is just a glimpse of what this organization can achieve, she stated. We have plenty of reasons to keep our heads held high. Just two years ago, this team only won five games. We're young and still finding our way, but we've bonded and truly enjoyed playing together. Early in the season, the fever struggled, staggering to a record of 1-8. to eight. However, they turned things around, showcasing some of their best basketball following the All-Star break and the Olympics. Clark, increasingly acclimated to the WNBA competition, expressed pride in her team's resilience during this turnaround. It's tough when you feel like you're playing your best basketball, and then it has to come to an end. But I'm proud of this group. They stayed resilient all year and had so much fun together, she added. With the spotlight constantly on her, Clark averaged 19.2 points, 8.4 assists, and 5.7 rebounds per game in her debut season. There's a solid foundation to build upon in Indiana, and Clark signaled that the future is indeed bright, as long as they continue on their current trajectory and grow as a cohesive unit. Could Caitlin Clark become the all-time leading scorer in WNBA history? After an incredible rookie season, many are wondering how long it might take her to break some of the league's most coveted records. Although Clark's debut season came to an end in the first round of the 2024 WNBA playoffs when the Indiana Fever was eliminated by the Connecticut Sun, she has already set herself on a path toward a legendary career in basketball. Just months after becoming the all-time leading scorer in NCAA history, Clark shattered multiple WNBA records for rookies, including most points in a season, most assists in a season, and the single-season rookie record for three-pointers made, among others. Given this stellar start, it's not far-fetched to believe that Clark could eventually dominate career statistics like points, assists, and three-pointers. But how long would it take for her to achieve these milestones? Can Caitlin Clark break the WNBA career points record? In 2024, Clark averaged 19.2 points per game, playing in all 40 regular season games and totaling 769 points in her debut. The all-time points leader, Diana Taurasi, currently holds 10,646 points and has played 20 seasons in the league. As of now, Taurasi has not confirmed if she will return for another season or retire. If Taurasi were to retire, Clark would need 9,878 points to break the record. If she maintains her current scoring pace of 19.2 points per game and plays every game in a 40-game season, she could become the all-time leading scorer in her 14th season, which would be in 2037. 
Of course, staying healthy is crucial, injuries could significantly delay her pursuit of this record. If she can boost her scoring average while remaining injury-free, she might achieve this milestone even sooner. Can Caitlin Clark break the WNBA career assists record? In 2024, Clark averaged 8.4 assists per game, totaling 337 assists, a new WNBA season record. The current career assists leader is Sue Bird, with 3,234 assists. If Clark continues at her current pace, playing all games and assuming the WNBA remains at 40 regular season games, she could become the all-time assists leader in her 10th season, which would be in 2033. However, it's worth noting that another player, Courtney Vandersloot of the New York Liberty, is also on track to break Bird's record. Vandersloot is just 385 assists away from the record and is projected to surpass it in 2026 if she continues her current performance. Can Caitlin Clark break the WNBA career three-point record? In 2024, Clark averaged 3.1 three-pointers per game, making 122 shots from beyond the arc, the highest in the WNBA for the season. The career three-point record also belongs to Torasi, who has 1,447 three-pointers. If Torasi retires and Clark maintains her current shooting pace, playing every game in a 40-game season, she could break this record in her 12th season, or by 2035. With her talent and determination, Caitlin Clark is on the brink of making history. The journey ahead is full of potential, and fans are eagerly watching to see just how far she can go. Rebecca Lobo has strong words for Caitlin Clark following the announcement from ESPN. On Wednesday, Caitlin Clark's impressive rookie season came to an end as the Connecticut Sun defeated the Indiana Fever 87-81 in Game 2 of the WNBA playoffs. The game was aired on ESPN, and less than 24 hours later, the sports network made a significant announcement regarding viewership. According to ESPN PR on X, Game 2 between the Fever and Sun became the most-watched WNBA game of all time, averaging 2.5 million viewers and peaking at 3.4 million. This record prompted ESPN analyst Rebecca Lobo to share her thoughts on Clark's remarkable impact on the league. Just like in college, Caitlin Clark is a singular force when it comes to driving viewership and ticket sales, Lobo tweeted. The WNBA is finally shining in front of millions. I couldn't be more thrilled for these women. This milestone follows closely after Game 1 between the Fever and Sun became the most-watched WNBA playoff game on ESPN. Breaking such records is becoming a hallmark for both Clark and the Fever. Since her arrival in April, she has consistently shattered viewership and attendance records at every level. On the court, Clark has set multiple records, including the most assists in a season, the highest points scored by a rookie, and the most assists in a single game. Notably, she's the only rookie in league history to record a triple-double doing it twice, no less. After a stellar four years with the Yukon Huskies, Lobo entered the WNBA in its inaugural season in 1997, playing seven years primarily with the New York Liberty, where she earned all-star honors and was named to the second all-WNBA team. Lobo was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 2017, solidifying her legacy in the sport. Caitlin Clark is not just making waves, she's redefining the landscape of women's basketball. The future looks incredibly promising, and fans can't wait to see what she accomplishes next.